Welcome to Crossfire. I'm Stephanie Cutter on the left. I'm Newt Gingrich on the right. Tonight, we're looking at two very different strategies to grow jobs. Texas Governor Rick Perry has an aggressive nationwide free market strategy. Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley has a home state-centered strategy. Here's what Maryland business owners are seeing right now. We've created more jobs than all other states combined, where you'll find limited government, low taxes, and a fair legal system. That's why Forbes magazine says Texas is home to seven out of the ten top cities in America to do business. Maybe it's time to move your business to Texas. The governors of both states are in the crossfire tonight. Democrat Martin O'Malley of Maryland and Republican Rick Perry of Texas. Governor Perry, the first question to you. You know, in your ads, you say think Texas. So I want to think about a couple of statistics from your state. You have the highest number of uninsured, the highest number of minimum wage workers, one of the highest poverty rates, and none of that appears in your ads. <laughs> and I'm curious why. Those are things that I think businesses would want to know. Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting that you want to cherry pick some numbers that are out there. You know, and we never thought in the state of Texas that you judge success by the number of people that are on public assistance. Uh, and so we made the decision in the state of Texas that we don't want to force people to have to buy insurance. Uh, they have access to some of the finest health care in the world when you have the Texas Medical Center there, one of the largest medical establishments mm -hmm. uh, in the country. So uh, the idea that uh, uh, we're going to make people buy insurance mm -hmm. to be a part of Texas, we're about giving people freedom, uh, freedom to make decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see places uh, or companies like Facebook, eBay, uh, some of the Apple, which is soon to be one of the largest employers in, in uh, the city of, of Austin. Uh, Caterpillar, every engine manufacturer in the United States is now uh, in the state of Texas. When you see Toyota decided to uh, build every uh, pickup truck in America yeah. in the state of Texas, they didn't come there if they were worried about whether or not there was not going to be a but skilled workforce, those jobs that the people were going to have health care. Minimum wage jobs. Ninety-five percent of all the wages in Texas uh -huh. are above minimum wage. Ninety-five percent. One out of ten minimum wage workers 90, in the country live in Texas. 90, well, and when you talk I about freedom, I also this. want to talk about opportunity. So for the uninsured, yeah, one out of four Texans are uninsured. Where is their opportunity to be able to afford health insurance if you're not providing them the opportunity to get health insurance. Well, I think the, the real issue is here, give people the freedom of whether or not they want to have uh, a, mm -hmm. the, the, a good job to be able to take care of their family first. If you don't have that first, then their only alternative uh, is uh, some but, government but subsistence program. those people on program. minimum wage can't afford health insurance. And the other uh, uh, Again, piece I of go the back argument, to, I think if you it, don't I have insurance, when you, when you, focus you can't on afford insurance, the only way you can get health care is to show up at the emergency room, when you, which increases premiums for people like us who have insurance. So what about the freedom but, of people who are paying their premiums every month? They're paying for the uncompensated care. I want to go back to this issue the, of, of minimum rooms. wage jobs that, that you all talk about and you want to focus on. Uh, and, and it sounds to me like uh, you'd rather have no job than a minimum wage no, job. Uh, you know, well, so let's talk about the number of jobs that are created in the state of Texas. 30% of all the jobs created in America were created in the state of Texas in the last 10 years. Some of those were minimum wage jobs. But if you know the statistics, 40% of individuals that have minimum wage jobs are out of it and moving up in the first year, 80% of them after the second year. So you have to have these minimum wage jobs to get people in the workforce, and then they work their way up. That's how it works. We also have the difference. number of highest paid jobs that were created in America at that same period of time. Let me ask Governor enough. Malley for a second. You wrote a very interesting piece the other day, sort of responding to Governor <laughs> Pellet. I mean, this is a very interesting dialogue, I think. But one of the challenges I think that, I, that I'd like to, to have you comment on is one of the things which gives your economy a unique position in the country is that you have places like Montgomery County where you have federal employees who are getting who are averaging ninety five thousand dollars because federal workers in the washington area are among the highest paid workers in the country doesn't that put you in a very different kind of box than any other state because of the sheer number of federal workers who are being paid by the whole country but who are able to live in three or four of your key counties well we certainly have competitive strengths and we have competitive advantages and we build on those but ninety percent of our new job creation in maryland has actually come from private sector jobs, albeit they are sectors like biotech, 
life science that want to be near NIH. They are IT and cyber that want to be near places like Fort Meade. And I'm very proud of those federal employees who do those jobs in science and security. And they are certainly people that are well trained. See, the, the debate here is really, and I think that the governor has it half right. I mean, I think job creation is critically important, and there is no progress without a job. But we have to be about building an economy from the middle out, an economy that creates middle-class opportunities, an economy where we're actually strengthening that talent pipeline, improving our skills of our people, and able to actually create more and higher jobs. One of the key differences between our two states, Newt, is that our state was ranked among the top three in upward economic mobility, Texas was ranked among the worst states in but, terms but of downward you, economic that. mobility. As, as an objective fact, in the five years you've been governor, Texas has gained 440,000 people. According to the U.S. Census, Maryland has lost 20,000. Now, if we're having all this upward trajectory, why is Texas doing 22 times better in population migration over the last five years than Maryland? Actually, you need to check your facts. US We've census. actually added 230,000 people and we've actually grown by 4%. But that fact is dubiously put out by, by some blogs. Well, this was the U.S. State. Census. I mean, and I think the other issue is that the number of people coming to Texas, those are a lot of low-wage workers looking for jobs. Again, you're, and that's you're where absolutely they're finding incorrect them in Texas. with that. When you look, how do you, how do you justify, how do you stand there and, and say that you got all these low-wage workers that are coming to Texas when Facebook, eBay, uh, all of the technology companies, Apple, you got, again, Caterpillar, Toyota, major manufacturers that are coming into the state of Texas. Uh, Martin's state lost 4,700 jobs in July. That's the fact. You lost 4,700 jobs in July. Texas created 18,200. So this idea, I mean, there, there's, in some, August, we there's, some real, there's some real disconnect here uh, uh, about the story that's going on that we're hearing at this table and what the facts are. Everybody in this country understands that there's something really fascinating going on in the state of Texas, and it's been going on for some time. How in the world would you, I mean, what's the reasoning that you would give if the story that you're painting, Stephanie, is even close to true? Mm -hmm. Why would Facebook, eBay, those major well, technology can companies I, can I, can move absolutely. to the state of Texas if it was such a dark and ominous I place. Think Governor Mal I think yeah. Governor O'Malley wants to answer. Yeah, Governor, it's great that you have those companies in Texas. We have great companies, Lockheed Martin, Under Armour, Marriott, and others in Maryland. And they're great companies. And we're but the fact of the matter, Texas. well, and you're welcome to try. Uh, we are. I know you are. I'm here and I'm making but Governor, progress. We have the number one median income in the country you have the 25th median income. Your state is tied for last place along with Mississippi now in the percentage of your people who work in minimum or less than minimum wage jobs. That's not an economy that is actually lifting up the middle class and expanding economic opportunity. We made college more affordable. You made college more expensive your for working families. Your college is more expensive than the state of Texas tuition and cost. That's just the facts. Those We've are there. We've made our schools the number one in America for five years in a row. The, You've had the greatest number of uninsured citizens for you know, five trying years. To, trying to say that Texas and Maryland are the same are talking a lot like Apple. Oh, no, they're very when, different. When they, they, very, they truly are very different. You led the nation in the creation of government jobs Not from true. 2008 to 2012. Yes, you did. That's the factual. Uh, mm -hmm. Next door to Washington, D.C. is a pretty good draw. But at some point in time, this issue is really about who has the best idea about how to grow America, how to put Americans to work, and it's the private sector. I if, agree. 90% if, if of our jobs have come from the private well, sector since the Bush recession hit. That's 90 percent of private sector. But, but your job growth has been abysmal compared to states like Texas. Can they I mean, that's actually, actually last year we there. led the region in rate of jobs. Led the region. But I want to ask we're talking question, about America we, here. We had this dialogue earlier about low-paying jobs, and I want to ask from from that perspective. The city of Baltimore, one out of every four people, is in poverty. Wouldn't they actually be better off to have a job, even if it was a minimum wage job? Oh, absolutely. There's dignity in all work, and every job's important. And this year, we moved more of our citizens from welfare into work than at any time in the history of the Welfare to Work program. So that's very important. But what I'm trying to underscore here, Newt, is that it's, there's a mix that's required. 
you not only have to be willing to cut your budget, you not only have to be willing to be fiscally responsible, we have a triple A bond rating, you also have to be willing to make the smart investments that actually improve the levels of education for your people, improve their skills. We have the third best, that's not according to me, that's according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and we rank number one in innovation and entrepreneurship, again, according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and we rank the fourth best state for new, uh, new uh, business startups, according to Fast Company magazine. So we believe that you need to educate, you need to innovate, you need to rebuild, and need to give your next generation the opportunity to move up the ladders of success, not simply to see their wages decline, mm -hmm. which is what's been happening in our Absolutely country Absolutely not by correct. That is not correct if you're pointing to Texas with that. When you look and see what we've done uh, in our public schools in the state of Texas, uh, particularly over the last decade, we have seen out the National Assessment of Educational Progress. That's kind of the gold standard, I think you'll agree, when you talk about how kids are doing in school. Eighth grade African American and eighth grade Hispanic kids in the state of Texas scored the second highest in America. That's the type of progress you're looking for, particularly in the areas that people care about, which is those STEM uh, courses and where you're moving them into college. We've had almost a half a million young Hispanics access higher education in the and state of Texas from 2000 to, to 2011. the second to worst dropout rate in your high school. Our graduation rates are 86% in the state of Texas. You know what yours are in Maryland? They're improving. 83%. That's less than 86, Governor. It, 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 look, I think that uh, we're throwing a lot of statistics around. I want to change course a little bit. Today, the Chamber of Commerce put out a letter uh, asking uh, House Republicans to stop playing games with the debt limit. You've previously told them, told House Republicans not to raise the debt limit. Is that still your position? It is. I, I think it's not in the, uh, the country's interest to, uh, to, to raise the debt limit. They need to address the spending issue. Mm -hmm. Americans realize that uh, one of the, the great problems that we have in this country uh, is this massive debt that's been created, uh, multi-generations uh, so ahead of us. So the business community versus Republican politics, that's where you're coming down. Uh, look, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm coming down with the people of the United States. and the Even though you've increased your States. debt by 300%. The, the bottom line is we've been growing uh, as, a, as a state, mm -hmm. and, and uh, is we've got a, uh, a bond rating that's debt. as high as the, the, the debt in, in the state of Texas uh, is one of the uh, per capita. Our debt in the state of ca Texas is one of the fourth lowest in the country. Uh, so the idea that we've increased debt versus our ability to be able to pay it off and, and what we're doing in the state of Texas, uh, okay. again, you're, you're, you're or apples and oranges on uh, uh, your, your... The numbers are the numbers, but we're going to uh, take a quick break. Uh, one person at this table <laughs> is turning down billions of dollars of money to help his state citizens. I'll ask him why next. Welcome back. Maryland Democratic Governor Martin O'Malley and Texas Republican Governor Rick Perry are in the crossfire tonight. What I most want to ask... Governor Perry is about health care. And as I said in the break, I'm sure you've been asked this a million times. So the answer should be great. <laughs> uh, you've been very critical of the president's health care law, the now the national law on health care. Uh, yet one in four of your citizens are lacking insurance. They can't get the care that they need. You are refusing to implement the law or take any of its funding. How do you rationalize that with your own citizens? Well, I think you're wrong in the your synopsis there that you'd say you can't get the care that they need. They do get the care. They've got access to health care in the state of Texas. We've made the decision uh, in the state of Texas that this is how uh, we're going to operate our state, uh, that we don't uh, count uh, as a, a big success the number of people that you put on government assistance. We allow them the freedom uh, to So where are they getting their that. care? Uh, they, they get health care in a multitude of different places, uh, federally qualified health plans. Do they pay for, for it? Uh, some do, some don't. Uh -huh. But the uh, the fact is they do have access to health care. So I think it's a bit of a misnomer for you to say that they don't get the health care they need. Uh, they do get that. They but let's get back to Obamacare and why. Uh, we don't want to participate in Obamacare. Number one, uh, we know that it's a broken system. Even uh, the expansion of, of, of Medicaid was one of those things that we said we're not going to participate uh -huh. in. And the reason is because even the president himself in 2009 said, Medicaid is a broken system, and I agree with you. Medicaid is a broken system. Mm -hmm. And why would we want to put uh, thousands, 
tens of thousands of people on a system that is broken because it would be tantamount to putting uh, another thousand people on the Titanic, knowing how that's going to well, turn out. Well, if you out. did, you'd cut so, your uninsured rate in half, the, but, including but, hundreds listen, of thousands of veterans in here, your here's, state here's the, here's who are the lacking fact. insurance. 18, if, if, if we were to put $18 billion over the next 10 years is what it's going to cost the state of Texas, $100 billion in total cost is what Medicaid would cost the state of Texas in the next, 100, or the next uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. We would only see 3% drop in the uninsured rate in the state of Texas. So uh, the idea that you're going to put that I, I don't type, think that that's accurate. And I the do other, think that's The other accurate. thing is you are talking about for the one in four Texans that are lacking insurance. Maybe some of them could afford to buy insurance and they're choosing not to. But many of them cannot afford it. So they, they don't have, have insurance. They have access to health care. So, which I, I means they the show idea, up at the emergency room the, the to get the health care. The left wants to say everybody has to go get Regardless insurance. of that, though. What we say is people They are need showing to up have, at the emergency room to get their health care. You know what? The people of the state of Texas have, have made the decision that that is how they would rather okay. run their health care system so me, rather than allow for so Washington, D.C. The cost of that falls to local communities, hospitals, people with insurance who are carrying those without the insurance. But if you implemented Obamacare, all of that, all of that cost would go down. Well, so, I, I suggest to you that, 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 that the cost, why are the unions standing up and saying that they're against Obamacare now? I mean, the unions, which were one of the strong supporters of Obamacare through the years, because we heard it's, you're going to see your premiums go down by $2,500. Now we know they're they going are. up by three. Uh, by three thousand dollars, you said you're going to be able to keep your doctors. We know that's not right. So the the whole premise of which Obamacare was sold to the American people, even the labor unions are saying, you know, we don't think we want to participate in this. Thank let you me, very much. Let me ask Governor Mai about that because you you've been a strong supporter of the president. You are a strong supporter, and you run a government, so you understand the importance of actually running something. Obamacare so far has missed 41 out of 82 deadlines. And we're coming right up on October 1st. Doesn't it trouble you that there are that many different parts of the system that are literally not meeting the standard? For example, where they have no check on who's going to apply to get money from the government. Uh, and they're going to rely on, quote, an honor system. Now, as somebody who runs a government and balances a budget, doesn't it worry you to think that we're going to give away billions under an honor system? Well, I... I I think we were talking, when I was listening to the governor earlier, he was talking about a broken system. What we have right now is a broken system. For our part in Maryland, I can't speak to the 41 misses in a federal bureaucracy, but I can tell you that we've decided to be an early implementer of the Affordable Care Act. And we know that there's going to be hiccups. We know that this won't be easy. But we also know that it's crazy to depart with 17% of our GDP for health care. No other industrial nation does that. When I was a boy, it was about 5% of GDP for health care. So we believe that we're going to have a competitive advantage on states so, like Texas that don't implement this. So, so let me build on that for a second. I'm going to ask you two other questions. One is you just saw Walgreens announce that they're dropping their corporate insurance and they're going to give people money to go out and buy their own insurance. Doesn't it concern you when you see big companies like that in essence saying to people, we're now going to dump you onto the exchanges, good luck, and, and doesn't that change what has been the number one insurance model for the whole country, which was an employer-based system? Well, sure, it's concerning, and we need to be able to be uh, willing to adjust and make changes as we move forward with this. If this were easy, we would have done it long ago as a country. For our part, though, we will be meeting the deadline come October 1st. We have a lot of smart people working to implement the exchanges, and we're moving forward, not back. And we're uh, excited by the challenge. And we know also, we think this, Newt, we think that we're actually going to be able to increase our competitive advantage and that even more people will start businesses when they don't have to worry about losing their health insurance if they move from another plan. So uh, we're excited about what this can do so, for our so competitiveness. So do you think in that model, looking at Walgreen and others, and in your own state, two community colleges have now announced they're going to have shorter time periods. I think Ocean City government has announced they're going to have shorter time periods. They have fewer people who are eligible because they keep them under 30 hours a week. Uh, I think a major corporation has also done that. Do you think it would also be fair then 
for state and federal employees to have to go to the same exchanges under the same conditions as employees at places like Walgreens? Well, uh, I, su uh, I suppose if their government dumped their health insurance, they'd have to. <laughs> but I think they, they simply and gave it, them the money uh, like Walgreens. It, it, well, Walgreens, just to correct the record here, Walgreens is going into a private exchange. It's pooling its coverage with other private businesses, an option that they didn't have before. If they have the ability to lower costs and provide better care, why shouldn't they be allowed to do that? But, uh, but they're, they're not going to provide group insurance. They're going to give people a voucher. Hey, Martin, let me ask but you. But their costs are going to go from down. From the standpoint of, uh, of a couple of governors who um, have the... Uh, uh, responsibility to make decisions in each of our states. Uh, wouldn't you rather have the flexibility that Washington, D.C. basically said, listen, we think Maryland knows best how to run the health care program in the state of Maryland. That's one of the things that I've been promoting for a long time, which is the idea of the flexibility of block granting back to the states. And we could never get the, the, the federal government to, uh, to allow us to do that. That's one of the things that I wish. Well, the law actually this, allows you to the, do that. Well, not, no, man, had... not as far as block granting goes, because we've asked uh, multiple times to have the uh, the ability to allow Texas to set its own uh, program into place and we think we're very capable of, and I think you're capable of making those decisions better for Maryland citizens than somebody in Washington DC with a one-size-fits-all and that's my problem with Obamacare it's Washington DC forcing the states to meet all of these standards and that's why we've said no thank you we're not going to participate with this we're not going to we be involved in the exchange. We haven't had that experience yeah. we've actually found that HHS has been very responsive we yeah. found that we do receive the flexibility you and I differ in terms of you know capping it and block granting it and not letting people sign up uh, but a lot of the other governors are also having the are, are receiving the flexibility but if you don't want to do it uh, you know and, you're and, not going to do be it. Our, that's going to be our, our that choice. Do it we're, not gonna, we're not going to sit there and allow for Washington DC to make decisions for how health care is delivered in the state of Texas and bankrupt our state because yeah. we've run the numbers you and should. we think that there is a clear path towards the bankruptcy not only of the, our states but of this country if this goes into place the way that it's set you up You should today. come to the National Governors Association meetings again. I know Texas seceded from the National Governors <laughs> Association but if you came you might be able to learn from some of the other governors that are actually implementing this, doing it well and actually doing a better job of supporting an innovation economy and their workers well-being. Well, the bottom line is going to be uh, by seeing which of these states succeed as we go into the future. Okay. Right now, on job creation, Texas is leading the march. And on schools me, and median me, uh, income, 